So we're going to do a smile now with the latest, the new Smile Pro machine. Yeah. Over to Dr. Aditya. Yeah, hi, good morning. Am I audible now? Yes, Dr. Aditya. You're yeah, so I'll just uh, give you a quick introduction to the new uh, Visual Max 800 uh, laser. The, this is the machine which is known as the Smile Pro. So here we have a planning station. So this is where we, uh, you enter all your uh, patient data, his name, age, sex, refractive error, your uh, corneal parameters, etc. etc. Also over here, you can enter your power settings you require for the procedure that you're performing. Here we have the two arms of the machine. So the one which has this blue light here, this is the laser arm. And the arm over here is a microscope arm in the second one. So as you will uh, see in the procedure, each arm will swing up and down for each step of the procedure. So this arm will come down now first to apply the laser. After the laser is applied, the arm goes up. And the second arm comes down later on for the lenticle dissection. So what are the main um, differences between the Visionmax 800 and the older Smile platform? One, the laser application here is only eight seconds. So in the older one, it was about 22 to 30 seconds. So once the laser application time has been brought down so drastically, your chances of having suction loss are also brought down during the procedure. Second, they have an incorporated algorithm for cyclotorsional compensation. So this provides you with a higher degree of accuracy when you're treating uh, patients who have a high cylinder as well. So yeah, so without any further ado, let's just uh, go on with the procedure. I'm just gonna prepare my patient now. Sir, mala paranga sir. Kana tharad mala paranga. Kana mooda dinga mala pat dhir. All right. Very good. Kila paranga sir. Kila paranga. Pat dhir. The clamp apply panna pora. Relax paranga sir. The white light paranga. Relax paranga sir. The white light paranga sir. White light paranga. Right. Yeah. The white yes. So this step of the procedure is actually very important. What I'm doing now is I'm drying the ocular surface. The idea is to keep the conjunctiva absolutely dry while the cornea has to remain evenly wet for the laser to apply smoothly in an even area. Very good. Right. So now I'm going to bring down the laser arm. OD. Oh, can I have the external camera? External camera. Yes. So head puts a lighter left living a little abdila, punch left living as a layer. As that's the cone being applied now for the docking. As you can see here now in the external camera view, the pupil center is being observed for the docking now. Just bringing the laser arm down. Laser will start now. So that's the posterior cut. Side cut over. This is the anterior cut now. That's about all. So that was the laser application. Only takes eight seconds. Really, very fast. Switch to microscope, please. Microscope view bar. Right. So, on the white light motor powering, sir. Yes. So, what we first do now is that we have, we have to lift up the cap. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the incision here. This is the incision, just opening it up now. So I'm just lifting up on the cap and moving forward. So 
So that's the gap there. Now what we do, I need to make a small entry into the posterior pocket as well. So can you see a white line here? This is the edge of the lenticule. So I'm going to make a small entry into the posterior pocket, not making it very large because I don't want to enter the posterior pocket on my first attempt. So I don't know if it's very visible, but see, this is my entry into the superior plane. And you see this white line here, ma'am, is that visible? Yes, it's visible. Yeah, so that's the entry into the posterior pocket. So I've kept it purposely small now. So I won't enter the posterior pocket on my first uh, attempt at the dissection. So this is quite important. I'm, I'm avoiding that inferior entry now. I'm lifting up on the gap incision. Then just move like a windshield wiper. Don't try to go all the way to the end of the uh, cap and do a dissection in one sweep. Just move like a windshield wiper. That's all you have to do. You'll notice that if you take smaller uh, bites of the tissue for dissection, no, it goes much smoother and much easier. Just take your time, dissect it up to the very end. So that's the superior dissection. Now I'm going to go inferior now. Go to the inferior pocket, open it up a little bit. So the inferior plane will have a little more uh, tougher dissection characteristic. It won't be as smooth as the superior. So that's another way that you can ensure that you know that you're the inferior pocket. And you'll notice the inferior pocket, I'm not going to the edge of the lenticule, ma'am. I'm sparing the edge right now. I'm not cutting the edge yet. I'm only going to as close to the edge as I dare to while leaving the margin of the lenticule intact. So the center is now completely dissected, ma'am. So can we see that? Right. That's the center. And now I'm going to poke out the edge now. As I'm cutting the edge, you'll see a silver line across the lenticule. Can you see that at, at the edge of it? That is the lenticule being now cut at the edge as well. So here it's done. I'm leaving a small clock over here undissected on purpose. So lenticule will not fold over as I'm doing the dissection. So this edge is also cut now. That's it, post up. That's the lenticule, ma'am. Excellent, excellent, Dr. Aditya. That's a wonderful demonstration. Thank you. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to put a small bit of saline here and irrigate the interface so I can wash out any debris that might be impacted inside the interface. And then gently, a few sweeps will bring out any foreign bodies or any material in, in, inside the interface here. So that's about all. So what you mean to say is when you're doing the anterior dissection, you might go uh, up to the edge of the uh, plane, but when yeah, you're doing the exactly. posterior, you won't go up to the edge of the plane and do it finally. Exactly. So because I want the center to be completely dissected before I go and uh, cut the edge out, because if I go inferior and, and, and cut like how I cut in the superior, right? The lenticle might fold over before the dissection is complete. So then you won't know um, how much of the dissection is complete, how much is incomplete. It's a very confusing uh, scenario to be in. Okay. And when did the cyclotorsion compensation happen actually during the procedure? We didn't quite get it. Yeah, so when the docking occurs, ma'am, uh, if the patient has a high cylinder and you've marked the limbus at 0 and 180 preoperatively, you can uh, rotate the joystick and align the reticules along the 0, 180 degree mark and you can compensate for cyclotorsion. But you know, uh, truth be told, uh, we've been doing SMILE from 2014. We've been treating cylinders as high as uh, minus four, minus five. And we have noticed excellent results without the use of a cyclotorsional compensation as well. But since this machine has it, if I'm treating a patient with a high cylinder, I go ahead and do that as well. So this patient doesn't have a high cylinder, so I'm not really bothered doing the marking at all. 
So even if, even with the new version, you need to mark the zero one eighty and then only yes. go ahead with the. Ah, uh, that's for now. In a few couple of months' time, they say they're coming with an automated software. That's that is, right. yeah, that's going to um, uh, you know, work in cohesion with the IOL master. So all of that will uh, happen uh, automatically. That very soon, right? Excellent. Just right. a question: In case of uh, complications like uh, Bala, Bala. OBL, uh, yeah. how would you handle? So uh, OBL doesn't really happen. OBL might happen if your energy settings are too high. Uh, so right now I am actually operating on lower in energy settings. Put kila paranga sir, kila paranga. So lower energy settings and and uh, wider spot spacing lead to a quicker recovery. But the trade off is that the dissection is not as easy as it would be in a higher energy setting and a closer spot spacing. Nara paranga sir, the white white light paranga. Rendu kanna tarandu paranga sir, rendu kanna tarandu the white light paranga sir. Aavla na. But can I have the microscope view, please? Yeah, so I'm just going to show you the drying now. This is actually a very very critical step of the procedure. So, like I said, we have to keep the conjunctiva absolutely dry. If the conjunctiva is wet, you can uh, run the risk of having a suction loss during the procedure. So, the kila paranga sir. I'm just taking my time to make the ocular surface absolutely dry as possible. On the kila paranga. Kila paranga sir. See that uh, you are not wearing uh, gloves. Uh, yeah, I, 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 so I knew. I'll tell you, ma'am. So I knew that the question was going to come up, but a lot of what you do in smile is proprioceptive. You have to uh, feel the feedback on your fingers, so it's much easier uh, without doing it when you're not wearing gloves. So that's the reason why. Wait, let me parang sir. So you can see now the surface is wet, but the cornea is kept evenly. Sorry, the surface is dry, but cornea is kept evenly wet. Kila parang sir. Hello. Right. Tala ko tayo itlog buo pa nasa ko tayo itlog. Ah, bear ni. Ano ko tayo itlog buo pa nasa? Ah, bear ni. Tang. Light up, sir. The green light up, sir. I'm there, sir. Super. So this is the docking now again. You just ask the patient to fix it on the green light. Center the pupil. Once you got seventy percent applanation, hit the suction. So when the laser is ready, apply it. It's a posterior cut, side cut now, and it's a cap. That's all. Pass this to microscope, please. Thank you. Yeah. So white light appearing, sir. I'm bearing, sir. So it's the same story again. You just have to uh, open up that incision. Sir, in the corner, turn the white light appearing, sir. I'm bearing, sir. Lifting up on the cap now. Keep an upward lift. So just have to keep the upward lift so you don't enter the posterior pocket on the first go. And open up the superior um, pocket right up to the margin of your incision. So I'm using a 2.5 millimeter incision here. So here's the posterior pocket now being opened. Just scratch it a little bit. You can see the uh, margin opening up. You see a silver line here. Then just enter the posterior pocket. That's a button. So as usual, kila parang sir. 
lift up on the cap when you are entering the superior pocket so we don't enter posteriorly and then just move like a windshield wiper so you will find that sometimes the left eye is a little more trickier because the dissection uh, instruments come in contact with the speculum so you just have to find your way to maneuver around it again just dissecting till the edge here so that's a superior dissection done now i'm entering inferiorly once you enter inferiorly just extend that incision you've made till the edge i hope that's visible now so now posterior dissection again i'm only going and dissecting the center of the lenticule i am not going to cut the edge yet I'm going as close to the edge as i dare to but not quite touching the edge yet so that's the central dissection done now now if you can observe i've poked out cut the edge of this part move about 4 or 5 clock hours over here leave that intact leave a central island here poke out again now cut out the edge completely right up to the subincisional area now cut out the superior few clock hours and finally take this undissected part here so that's that கொஞ்சம் கீழே பாருங்க சார் அப்படியே இருங்க தட்ஸ் அ லெண்டிகல் கம் அவுட் நோ இஃப் யூ ஆர் a beginner இட்ஸ் a little you it is a reasonable to go and spread this lenticle and ensure a complete thank you for that excellent demonstration